Now that we've finished normalization and we've warped all of our anatomical and functional images to a standardized space, usually the last pre-processing step is what's known as smoothing. All smoothing does is it averages data values across nearby voxels. And with higher orders of interpolation, you gather and average data across a wider range of voxels. You can also increase the size of your smoothing kernel. And by doing that, you can increase your signal to noise ratio, but at the same time, you can also lose spatial specificity. This can be an issue if you're trying to tease apart discrete locations of cortical or subcortical regions. Usually, the size of the smoothing kernel ranges anywhere from about 4 to 10 millimeters. To do this in SPM, click on the Smooth tab in the SPM5 graphical user interface. For the images to smooth, click on Specify Files, and we're going to select the warped files which we ran in the previous pre-processing step. We're going to select all of these, click Done, and for the full width at half maximum, this is the size of your smoothing kernel. Now the default is 8 millimeters, and notice that this is in all of the X, Y, and Z directions. In other words, we can change the amount of smoothing we want in one direction without changing the amount of smoothing in the other direction. But usually, we select the same amount in all three coordinates. I'm going to leave that as is. And for data type, you can just leave that as the default. Go ahead and click Run. And it should only take a few moments for smoothing to complete for your functional data set. Once smoothing is completed, click on Check Registration to check your smooth images. Here I'm going to compare our smooth images to the images from the previous pre-processing step. As you'll see here, the images that are smooth on the top are more blurry and they've had some spatial interpolation done to them. And so they're at a slightly lower resolution than the images on the bottom. That's all there is to smoothing, and once you're done with that, you're ready to go ahead and run your statistical analyses on these smooth data sets. Now the advantages, as I mentioned before, is primarily that smoothing increases the signal-to-noise ratio at each voxel, because noise, presumably, if you average over a wide enough space, should tend to average out, and any true signal should be amplified. Also, you can use what's known as cluster correction when you perform smoothing. This is because assuming that each voxel is completely independent from any other voxel surrounding it is a bit of a strict and conservative assumption. By smoothing, we make the assumption that nearby voxels will share similar bold activation profiles. And, th and thus, we can use a cluster correction algorithm to determine what degree of contiguous voxels we need to pass a certain statistical threshold.